sponsored by Carpetland USA and Menards. Welcome to week five of the score. February is officially here and the games continue to get bigger and bigger. Absolutely. Several teams looking for conference championships, including Pleasant Valley girls. But we're going to start for the second straight week in the Western Big Six as Quincy still remains on top. Let's go to Wharton Fieldhouse as we go red for women tonight. You can wear your red. You can call me out. I'm going to call you out right away. <laughs> Moley's yeah. been playing red hot. See, they're red. Trey Taylor. Rebound, put back. That's what you get for all this talk we had earlier today. <laughs> then it's Grant Welch on the inbounds, hitting the jumper on the defensive end. It is Brock Hardy with the steal. He'll go coast to coast Woo. for the lay-in, plus the foul. Moline up 17 at that point, and then he'll go back door. It's wide open, another easy layup for him. The lead grows for the Maroons to 61-45. And then Jasper Ogborn on the defensive end. The steal, the layup, he's pumped. Moline knocks off Quincy. It's their first loss in the Western Big Six. Moline stays in the conference race with a 76-57 win. Now we need some help. Well, we don't control our destiny, but our guys play. I mean, they, they just continue to get better and better. Uh, I can't be, can't be proud of the group, and they're going to keep on working tomorrow to get better for next week. We knew coming into the second half of the season that we were down a couple games already, and, I mean, we've just been locked in at practice knowing that we had to come out and win two early game, two big games early, and I think our team handled that great, and everybody came out ready to play. I mean, it's definitely a big one. Now we're, now we're a game behind. Uh, you know, we got playoffs in a couple weeks, and this is a big, big momentum win for us. Moline will be at UT next Friday. The Rocks looking to stay in the mix as well on the road at all of in first quarter. Rocky up big. Marion Nimmers lay up on the inside. 39 to 5. Rocky in front. More from Nimmers. As he thinks about it. Thinks about it. That's a little spin move here in traffic. Gets to the rim. Lays it up and in. 41 to 5 after one. Second quarter on the break. Cameron Atkinson the lob to Nimmers for the oop. Lead grows to 38, and then Terrell Akers with the mid-range jumper. They're up by 40 at that point. This one all rock out, 103 Ooh. to 22. Another good matchup up in Sterling as one of the Warriors welcomed UT to town. Second quarter in this one, it's Andre Claver getting Ooh, inside, spinning pretty. and scoring off the window. Sterling with a one-point lead, UT answering right back. Devontae Cartwright with the nice feed as he gets the layup inside at 19-18. Golden Warriors still up by one. Then check this out. After the miss on one side of the court, it bounces over to Kyle Billings. He buries the three. 22-18, Sterling by four. Then just before the half, it's J.P. Schilling with the long distance three. Just before the buzzer, 25-20 Sterling at recess. Golden Warriors hold on to win this one, 62-57. Your final score. Next stop, Geneseo Galesburg adding to a big lead in this one. Jeremiah Babers with the nice move to the rim, splitting defenders. It's a 23-9 second quarter lead. Later the streaks on defense. Here's the steal, and here comes Babers once again. Dishing to Cohen Derry for the flush. The lead up to 17. Leafs though mounts comeback. They go inside out. Anthony Pierce with the three ball. As you remember that name, we may hear from him in just a All second. Right. Streaks though, so crisp moving the ball. Goes inside to Alex and Gypsyako for the nice finish. Galesburg in control. And how's this be for the half? Pierce emerging, no putting way. up the 55 footer. You bet. At the buzzer, Galesburg, though, wins this one. We'll check out a final score 72 47, your final in that one. To the MAC we go. Unbeaten, second ranked Pleasant Valley hosting Davenport Central. PB comes out firing. David Gorsline with the three from the corner. TD with an early three-point lead. A few trips later, Ryan Dolphin sights, shoots, bullseye. Six nothing. Spartans looking good early on, but they just get warmed up. Connor Borbeck with a trifecta of his own. 11 nothing. Spartans early on. Central tries to right the ship as it's Aaron Acker going to the window or going to the hoop and tossing it in off the window. Pleasant Valley though just too much. Gore's line, another trifecta. That made it 17 to two. This one all starting 78-39, your final score. Next up, it's 10 and 2 Davenport North making the trip to Clinton. Third quarter, Mike Lowry, a three-pointer to Davenport North, rolling in this one 41-10. Then Clinton's Jai Jensen getting the rebound, puts it back up for two more. That cuts the deficit. They have 17 now. 
Kyle McNulty, he adds on a three of his own. North, though, still rolling 44 to 17. And here's one more for good measure from Dennis Franklin. North wins this one at 65 to 28 over Clinton. Let's go to the pit. North Scott hosting nine and four assumption. Picking this one up second quarter. It's Drew Kilberg from the corner for three. It's good. North Scott grabs is down one. Then it will be the Lancers, Tyler Watkins firing the three, and they take a two-point lead, 27-25, but Assumption comes right back. A nice little backdoor feed there to J.J. Stratman, 32-27, and then it would be even proved. Rebound, put back, bucket, good, 34-27. This one goes the way of the Knights, 58-50. Bettendorf looking for their fourth straight victory, hosting Davenport West, third quarter of this one, West. The comeback, Jermaine Gardner with the corner three. Lead down to just six. Next trip, it's Fearless Carruthers. Again, their offense rebound and the putback. West crawls the way back within four, but Bettendorf writes the ship. Cameron Figs in the corner. And down the lefty three. Bettendorf backed up by seven. Then in transition, it's Cade Wilkins going right to the rim. Playing through contact, getting the bucket. Bettendorf goes on to win this one. They stay hot, 58-51 your final score. Central DeWitt looking to snap a three game skid on the road at Muscatine. Cake night. Oh, oh I wish there's I had a cake, some cake right now. I was going to say, where's our so slice? So good. Where's our Luke slice? Luke Wieskamp. Little brother of who? Oh, Joe. Joe. 31 29, Muscatine. And like about five <laughs> others. <laughs> five others. <laughs> Third quarter, Central DeWitt responds. It is Gibson McEwen with a the bucket there. 41 oh, 31. Hey. And then it's uh, Braden Hufford for three. 41 34, Central DeWitt. Okay. <laughs> yes, I love cake. Sean Gilbert, see it? the big guy, 43-34. This one will go to the Sabres, 70-58. Hey, great matchup up in Miles. 9-1 so Easton Valley welcoming 10-0 Lisbon Town. Easton Valley looking good. Connor Groover with the trifecta. Easton Valley with an early lead. More from the River Hawks. Caden Deardorf, Deardorf with the buckets. That made it a two-point Easton Valley lead. More from Easton Valley, more from Deardorf. Inside for two more friendly roll. Eastern Valley led by four at that point. They avenge one of their two losses of the season. We'll show you the final 58-38, your final score. 15-5, Wilton looking to get back on track, hosting Tipton. First quarter, it's Caden Kirkman. Just the jumper, but get the layup. All counts, 2-0 two, two Wilton early on. Wilton's in, Kaysen Reed. Goes by his defender, gets a little short baseline jumper to go. It's, they're off to a 5 nothing advantage. Then it's Kirkman again, catching in the post, getting in the lane, off the window and good. It's 7-6 Beavers. And in the second quarter, Jackson Hull. Jumper no good, but Kirkman there to help a friend out. 11-9 tipped in at that point. It would be a close one with Wilton winning by two. Let's hop back over to the Illinois side of the river. Three rivers we go. Riverdale hosting Orion in this one. And Rams come out firing. Brandon Stone knocks down the trifecta. Three point Rams lead. More from the home team. Brady Roger sights, shoots, rattles it in for Bullseyes. The senior makes it an 8 0 start. More from the home team. Andrew Malone with the bucket off the window. 10 2 Rams. Orient looks to right the ship as it's Xavier Winter knocking down the three. That cuts the lead down to five as Kayla Hammerling likes what she sees, but it's the Rams. Too much of this one. Kai Smeltzley with the bucket and the bump. Riverdale cruises 81-60. Your final in that one. Newman taking on Hall. Hall with a good start. Drake Garland with the three from the corner and an early three-point lead. But Newman comes right back. The fight for the ball goes to Owen McBride. He gets it, puts it in, and gets fouled. The lead down to just one. Newman takes advantage. Jacob Donald drives, misses it, gets his own rebound, puts it back up and in. Uh, that gave the Comets the lead. Later on, it's Marcus Williams with the steal. About half court, he goes the other way and scores it. 86-59, Newman with an easy victory. Out of Brockman, Jim and Kiwani, the visiting Bureau Valley Storm, tie it early as Adam Johnson is there for the board. And the bucket, not in this game up. But the Boilers quickly would start to heat up. Will Bruno? Strokes a jumper for the two points. Kiwani's up by two. Later, 
Kiwani pounds it inside to Brady Clark for the sweeping layup as his team would build an advantage. Then it's Nico Poe, sees an opening, dashes in for the layup and a five point margin for his team. Hey, Will Valley not going away. Carter Salisbury right down Broadway for two to keep the score within reach. For the Boilers have too much firepower. Good ball movement to Blaze Lewis for the triple as the Boilers would go on to win this one by 4-62. Next stop is the Lincoln Trail Tournament. Ridgewood playing Princeville in this one. Spartans all gas, no breaks in the first quarter. Aaron Godhart, he drives. First try, no good, but gets the rebound and the putback. So Ridgewood on a 5-0 run. Spartans going around the world in this next play. One, two, three, I think four. Probably higher than guys that can count. Wow. <laughs> Got to wow. Taking off shoes. I'm right? glad she feels comfortable <laughs> here at WQNE. <laughs> That Thanks one was money he adds on one more this time down inside Spartans. All gas, no breaks. They go on to win it 53 to 37. She'll be making ear jokes in no time. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get me back for that one. <laughs> Next up, rivals Weathersfield and Anna Juan playing in the LTC tournament as well. Cole Thorl pushing the rock up the floor, finds Zeb Rashad. We're tied at 33 all. But how about this? 4.3 seconds left in the game. Rashad pushing it up the floor. He will get the shot off. First one, no good, but look, gets the rebound, puts it back up. That's a win. But the refs call it no shot. Uh, it was a right I know, call. Was I know. Call? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to tell you yes I think it was. Though. So we go to OT right there. That one is good. That puts Braves within one point. So they've got the chance to win it. Mason Matney seals the deal at the charity stripe. He gets both of his three throws. So they win it by one, 44 to 43. Oh, in overtime. great rivalry as well. Let's hit the scoreboard. Deary Prophetstown with victory. Monmouth Roseville gets a win on the road. Princeton all over Mendota. Comanche cruises by 12. It's Northeast over Bellevue. Cal Wheat falls to North Cedar. And it is West Liberty with a tough loss to Iowa City, Regina. Halftime here on the score. Up next, we turn our focus to the ladies right here on WQAD. Hi, this is Jason Randall, and when I'm back home, I check out the score on WQAD.